Hello and welcome to the Transform Tuesday. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Products and Services here at Alpha Software. And today we're going to be uh, going a little bit more into reporting and invoicing using Alpha Transform. And this is based on a question that I received about two weeks ago. So always like to get questions. And if you do have questions, of course, you can always send them to TF service, as in transform service, at alphasoftware.com. So let's get started. But before we do, um, I'm flying solo here today. I don't have a I don't have a partner in crime. So if someone could let me know whether or not they can hear my voice and see my PowerPoint, I'll just type it into the questions box or something. That'll be terrific. Ah, super. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right. So let us get started. Um, about two weeks ago, in fact, it was two weeks ago. I did an ex I did a Transform Tuesday. Let me just scroll down and get my slide here. It's around 285, a little further. All right. Um, I did uh, a Transform Tuesday showing you how to sum up items in a data group. And I used an invoice as an example, although it, was, uh, it could also be applied to different types of reports and it could also apply to different reasons why you might wanna sum up items in a data group. Just to review that briefly, uh, what we did was we created a form and the form was really simple. It was just uh, the name of the client, the date of the invoice, and then we had this data group. And in this data group, we had the ability to um, collect uh, basically the name of a product, the price of the product, the quantity, and the extension of the product. And we used some TPL to do two, three things when that happened. The first was uh, to multiply out the quantity times the price to calculate the extension. The second thing was to loop through all of the items in the array to calculate the total. And the last thing we did was we ended up formatting it to put a dollar sign in and to add the number of decimal places that we wanted at the end. So that was that was two weeks ago. So the question is, once that, in, once that information is submitted, what do you do with it? And we're gonna be covering that in today's session as well as in a couple other sessions coming up. So we're going to talk today about creating invoices from transform forms. And like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to think just invoices. This could be really any kind of report that you want to send out for any reason. However you want the information presented, formatted, maybe it's going to be graphs, maybe it's going to be dashboard types views. But basically what we're talking about is taking that data and turning it into a nice presentation that's human readable. So as an overview, let's just take a look at the block diagram. What we're talking about here is basically taking that alpha transform mobile application we had, and when the data is uploaded into transform central, having it kick off some sort of process that creates a formatted PDF. Now we've already built the mobile application and the form upload portion is automatically a function of transform. So we didn't really have to do much there. As soon as you've submitted that form, it would automatically go into transform. Once it's into transform though, what we want it to do is kick off another process. And that's the process of actually creating that report and sending it off as the email. Now the, the communication here is something I'm gonna cover in another section. In other words, how do I form that, that web hook that lets me connect transform central to, to my application running on alpha cloud? And the other thing I'm going to cover in another session is how do I get Alpha Cloud to actually send that out as an email? Those are those are pretty easy, but they're a little bit too much, I thought, to cover in one session. So instead, today we're going to focus on when we get that data from Transform Central, how do we turn it into something that is easy to read, pleasing on the eye, and isn't just in the, the JSON format? So what I did was I put together a pretty simple uh, form, and actually let's pop back to my earlier slide and show you what it is. So here is a invoice. I realize this is probably appearing a little bit slow, but it's um, a little bit small. But it's got a header up here at the top. It's got the information who it's going to build to, when the date was. And then it has this, this box here, which has all of the line items and also a total here at the bottom. Now, our report doesn't actually have to do any totaling itself because we already did that last time using our code. So we already know what the total is. Really, all this report is supposed to do is just format the data and make it look nice so it came out. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how we go about doing that. And we're gonna do that using the Alpha Anywhere Table Layout Report. 
So let's get started. Oh, here's just a quick example of what I was talking about before. I've entered in items here, and it's gonna go into this type of report layout, and then we're eventually gonna get a report that looks something like this. So let's get started. And as we get started, let's take a look at actually what the data is that we're gonna be getting back from Transform so we understand how to handle it. We're gonna get back a relational set of data so relational meaning that we have some items that appear in these repeating groups and these are the items we don't know exactly how many items may or may not be on an invoice maybe it's one maybe it's 20 you know uh, so we create this as a data group so that you can add in as many as you want as you go so when that data comes into alpha anywhere it's basically comes in as what we call a flat file so this is the same data is repeated over and over again in other words if i were to take a look at that data that that uh, alpha gets it would have this name this invoice date and then the first product all the way down to extension and then would have the name and the date again and the next product all the way down to the extension and then the name again and then that again to the other extension and that's the format that we need to use when we're using the alpha anywhere report writer so let's jump into that report writer and i'm going to show you the uh, invoice that i built and i'm going to click edit all right, so here is the invoice uh, and here is the report. We have what's called a banded report writer in Alpha Anywhere. And if you and basically, if you look at these, these are, these are the bands. So each band re represents a section. The report header is the section that appears at the very, very top of the report. That seems pretty obvious. And the detail are the items that get repeated within the report, in this case, the items. So each time there is a new line item on your invoice, you're going to have a new one of these sections being presented here in the detail table. Now I've grouped this, um, this so that it only shows the items for one particular invoice. It wouldn't, I mean, it would not make sense to show multiple invoices from everything all over the place. Um, and then I've placed down here a total, but again, this is not a real calculated total. It's just taking the data that we got from the, um, uh, from transform and displaying it. And then at the very bottom, I've placed a page footer. And I can show you what this looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and hit print preview. And that's it there. And if I scroll down, you'll see you'll see my uh, thank you for your business sort of footer at the, at the bottom there. So let's talk about how I did that. And I'm going to show it to you by trying to replicate it again for you. So let me go ahead and close out this particular report. And we're going to create a new report. And we're going to say new report and it's going to ask us for our data source and in this case we're going to choose transform so we're going to start from a blank layout table report and i'm going to go ahead and click ok and the first thing it's going to ask me for is for the api key and so i'm going to pop over to um, my transform account which is here in safari here we go and I'm going to go get an API key. So I'm going to clear this one. Let me just re reload this page. So it looks like as you might see it when you came in. Okay, so when you log into Transform Central, one of the options under developer options is get an API key. And that basically is like a secret password that lets Alpha Anywhere talk to Transform. When you get an API key, you have different options for how much privileges you want to allow the user of that API key to have. Do you want them to be able to actually go in and create forms or delete form instances or edit roles or things like that? That's all possible, but for reporting, all you really need to do is read data. So I'm gonna click on read data and click get API key. And there's my API key. So I'm gonna right click and go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna go back into Alpha Anywhere and I'm gonna paste that API key right there. Now that the API key is pasted, Alpha Anywhere has the ability to look up and transform and show me all my different types of forms to ask me which form I would like to use for my report. So I tapped on the ellipsis button and here are all my forms. I have a lot of them. I'm gonna choose this guy. I'm gonna choose this one, invoice. This is the one we built two weeks ago. Okay, it asked me if I want all fields. I do, I could limit that if I wanted to, but that's fine. And it asked me for a filter and we would want to filter it but i'm not going to do that today the reason we do want to filter it though is we only want to print one invoice at a time we're going to cover that though in the later section when we talk about how we get alpha transform to make an api call to alpha anywhere 
and passing that information. So for now, we're just gonna, I only have one record, so we're not gonna do any filtering. There's really nothing else that we need to do here, although there, are, there is the ability to do what are called field type overrides. So by default, everything that comes from transform comes in as a character field. So if you want to, for example, sort things by date, it's not gonna work out properly for you unless it's understood by the machine that the field contains date values in it. Otherwise, it's just gonna try to alphabetize them. So things that, so January always comes first, whether it's in 2020 or 2016. So here, all you have to do to do that is, is put in your values. What I discovered from testing though, and keep in mind, this is a pre-release, is that currently, the uh, numeric function I found keeps giving me back zeros. So I need to go look at that. If you try it yourself, that just keep in mind that's something that I've discovered and, and go ahead and pick us uh, and we can do it. But it turns out we don't actually need to convert, uh, convert anything because those data values are really just for display only. So I'm gonna hit cancel, okay? And I'm gonna click okay. And it's gonna open up the report editor. Now the report editor comes with just three sections uh, at first, report header, detail, and a footer section. The report header prints once up at the top of the page. The report footer prints once at the bottom of the report. That could be several pages later. And the detail section prints once for each record and it iterates through the records. Let me give you an example. If I were to, for example, choose this cell, I'm gonna right click and say edit cell contents, and I choose a particular field, I'm gonna choose the uh, item field one. That, that's the name of the item that they ordered. And that's all I did. I'm gonna go ahead and hit print preview. Actually, let me save this first. My invoice two, all right. So save, and now what we're gonna do is uh, print preview. So that's this button here. And you'll see that it's taken each one of my items, the HDMI cable, the modem, and the surge protector. Those are all the ones that we entered it into Transform Central in that form that we submitted. Okay, that's pretty good. But now, besides just that, I'd also like to know what the quantity is and the price is and the extension. But lo and behold, I only have three columns here. I've used up one of them and I actually need three more. Well, that's not a problem because what you can do is you can actually split up your cells by right clicking and saying that you would like to add a new column. So I'm gonna add a new column right here. Try that again. Oh, I'm sorry, it did work the first time. Let me delete that. Oh, I can just merge. All right, so right clicking, you can keep adding columns. I'm just gonna keep doing this, but I'm gonna first of all delete this column. And now I've got two columns here. Now I can size these columns using these size handles. Take a look how that works. This one changes the box on the left, but it also shifts the box on the right. So what I tend to do is I tend to make them just about the size that I want first, and then I'll shift them all over. So we're gonna have these three columns, move that over. This one is going to be for the quantity. So I can just choose the quantity field. Dun, 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 dun. This one is going to be for the price per item. Price. And finally, this is going to be the extension, which is the quantity times the price. Again, I don't have to calculate this or let Alpha Anywhere calculate this because we have already calculated it using TPL before it was already uh, put into place. So I'm gonna put extension right here. All right, so there are my three fields. And I'm going to shrink up the amount of space. And by shrinking up the amount of space, it means there's going to be less blank space between each one of the lines. All right, so let's give this a go. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'm going to hit print preview. And we'll see what we've got here. So here we go, HDMI cable. We had two of them at $50 for $100. Expensive cable, it's probably pretty long. A modem surge protector. Here are their quantities, here are their prices, and here are their respective extensions. So I'm going to quit that. And now what I would like to do is because, is I would like to put this into a group. Now, why am I creating a group here? I'm creating a group because even though right now I only have one invoice, you know, I only have one record entered. As soon as I added another record, it would put all of those things together. I wanna, I wanna group them so that only the ones that, um, 
that go together appear in that same group. So here's the new group, and I'm going to click uh, group, and it's going to ask me, what do I want to group this on? So there are a couple different things, but here's an easy one to choose. If you want just ones from a particular form instance, you can use that metadata form instance ID. Likewise, the other thing that would probably be unique would be date time, because that goes all the way down, I believe, to the second, and chances are you're not going to enter in two invoices at the same time, uh, at exactly the same second. Possible, I suppose, if it was in a, in a large application. We just choose date time, doesn't really make any difference which one I choose as long as it's unique. Okay, so now once I've done that, two more sections appear. I've got a header and a footer for this new group. So in the header section, I'm just going to label what I'm looking at. I'm going to say quantity. And in the next to it, it's price. And then finally, EXT for extension. Now that's okay, but uh, let me move these up a little bit. Let's take a look at that. There we go, quantity, price, extension. Pretty good. The next thing I want to do though is I want to put uh, something up here at the top. In fact, I'd like to add in uh, the name of the person who bought it and the date and time. And I want to stack them on top of each other over here. But notice I only have one row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add another row into here. I'm going to right click and say add new row. And what that's done is it's moved, uh, is it's created a duplicate of what I had over there. I actually want these guys down here, so I'm going to move them. Let's grab that and paste it in. Grab that, paste it in, and grab the extension. And I'm also going to paste that in. All right. Then like before, I'm going to slide up on that slider to make sure that it's nice and tight below there. And now up here, I'm going to add in, you know what I might add in? Uh, yeah, I'm going to add in the field name for the name. So who does this go to? So I'm going to choose name. There it is. And then below that, it looks like I can make this a little, whoop, a little bit shorter because I don't need all that space. And below that, we're going to put in the date. So I'm going to just grab the date field here, which is called date time, if I recall. Here it is. And there it is. All right, save it, preview it. Getting pretty good, although I think I'd like to see a little bit of space um, in between here. Maybe put in another row. So let's add another row. Again, I'm going to move these guys down. X. Now you can probably tell from how I'm doing it, I would have been better off if I knew what the structure was going to be ahead of time rather than having to recopy these, but it's not a big deal. Also, there is a shortcut here. You double click on the columns to open the edit cell dialog box is what I'm doing here. So it doesn't take much time. Oops, stop it. And let's control X, okay, and control B. Right, great. So now we've got a little bit more space there, which is great. In fact, I'm going to move that down like this. And you know what? Maybe I'd like to put a line across the bottom to show that this is where it starts. So to do that, I'm going to add a bottom border to each one of these. I'll do that here in the property section. So this first section here, I'm going to choose, I'm going to go down to where it says border. I'm going to choose the color for the border. Let's go with black. And we're going to say it has a bottom edge, but you know it doesn't need to have a left edge or a right edge or a top edge. Uh, the style, let's just do single line, but you've got some options here. And width, let's do one pixel. Okay, so now that I've got that, I would like to actually uh, copy, I think I can do that here, turn on and off the copy. Yeah. What I want to do here is I want to copy that format onto the other cells. So to do that, I'm going to tap down here. I don't know if you see my mouse at the bottom left corner. 
where it says copy appearance. And I'm going to go and choose, I think I can choose multiples at once. And I'm going to say paste. And now if I take a look here, if I did it right, looks like I did. I have it set to the bottom edge. I've set it to black, single line, width. I've done it for all three of these, so I didn't have to set them all again. Let's see what we've got now. That's beginning to look a little bit more like an invoice. Pretty cool. So let's put a graphic up at the top, though, of my report. You know, So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to double click, and I'm going to choose an image, static image. And there's an image in my web project. And I've actually put in two images already. So I chose an image here called Computer Wizards. Okay. All right. That's cool. And then, of course, we want to show the total of the invoice. I kind of need that. So to do that, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say total. And let's make that a little bit bigger font than the other items, because it's sort of an important number, the total. And so we're going to grab, uh, we're going to go down here over here to the left. We're going to say that the size for this is, uh, let's go with 16 pixels. It's pretty big. And you'll see it changed right here. You can see that. And then we're going to insert a field. And we're going to put in the total field. Total. Here we go. And let's also make this. Oh, let's also make this size bigger. We'll make that also size 16. There we go. Hopefully that'll fit. I might need to move these around a little bit. Give the total a little bit more space. You'll notice that when I change it anywhere here, it affects all of the columns down. That keeps everything nice and lined up. Now for total, I think I want to have that justified to the right. We'll take a look. We'll see how that looks in a minute. All right, and let's give it a save and let's do a quick preview. There we go. We have our graphic, we have the name, we have all that. Now we can keep tweaking away at this to make it look nice. Um, but one thing a lot of people would like to do is at the bottom of their invoices, especially if this is going to be created as a, as a PDF, is they want to have uh, like a thank you or a watermark or something at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these cells here. I'm just going to combine them together into one big cell. And then for the static text, I'm going to say, thank you for your business. Now I put this in the report footer and you're going to see what happens. It's not exactly what I want, uh, but let me go ahead and show you what I mean. But uh, so let's say I'm going to save this, I'm going to preview it. It says, thank you for your business here. And hey, that's fine. But I think a lot of time, kind of what you might want to have is something that's always hanging out here at the bottom. You know, Maybe it's a signature line. Maybe it's got your uh, email address and phone number or something like that at the bottom. And you want it to be down here, not, not where this detail section ends. Well, you can do that by creating a different kind of section called a page footer. And to do that, all you do is you right click where it says report and you choose page footer. You'll see there's also a page header option if you'd like. So I'm gonna actually delete what I did here. Delete. And it's down here in the page footer. That I'm going to merge those cells. And I'm going to type in again, thank you for your business. All right. And we are going to center justify that. So let me choose uh, alignment, which is set to left. We're going to put that as the center. And let's make that bigger. Let's make a size. Let's make it really big. Let's make it like 24. And that's kind of dark. Often when you do really, really big text like that, it's kind of nice to make it a little bit uh, like a watermark, a little bit more faded. So you can change the color of that uh, down here. Color. There we go. And we're going to make that, let's go with 888. I happen to know that's a good hexadecimal value. Oops, I chose the wrong uh, wrong cell. I choose 888. Let's see what that looks like. It's a little bit, a little bit less. 
Now I'm gonna run it and you would think that the page footer would appear right at the very bottom. It doesn't, let me show you. It's better, you know, it's not crammed up there, but it isn't really at the bottom. It turns out there's another little secret option that I'm gonna tell you about right now. When you go down to the page footer section, if you right click on the page footer and you say properties, there is a button. There is a checkbox called justify to the bottom of the page. So bonk, cl click on that, save that, print preview, and there we go. So you can see how you can use the report editor. I've been working on this uh, with you and explaining it as I've gone, uh, probably for the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and we've got it this far. But we really can make really any type of detailed invoice that you want. And then when you're done, of course, it can be converted to a PDF, and we want to do that automatically in our next session. So that covers what I wanted to show you today. Um, the, oh, there is a, uh, but it looks like we have a couple of questions, which is direct. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, does the report builder have a page header section? Yes, yes, it does. Um, so on each page, you might very well want to repeat your name, your address, and stuff like that. We're going to pop over here to where it says report header. You're going to right click. Oops, I'm going to pop on report. You're going to right click and you're going to say page header. And that's where you can put in uh, stuff for your page header. Now, I don't actually want that. So I'm going to turn that off and go right back to page header and uncheck page header. That's a good question. And the next question is, can the image be a field from a customer record? Yes, it, it absolutely can. And you know what? I should probably, I will show that to you uh, next week if you like. But yes, you can absolutely do reports from customer records. So for example, if a, if a customer is out in the field and took a, or a user is out in the field and took a uh, picture of something and you wanted to see that picture in the report, you, you absolutely can do that. I'll show you how that works. Okay. Um, Here's a separate question, not necessarily about this one, but it says forms on my device are hidden. How can I make them visible? Well, there's a couple reasons that a form might be hidden on your device. Let me just cover that real quick. Let's go over to Transform Central and we'll go into the Management Console. Okay. The first reason, let's choose my invoice form again, just for the heck of it is that the property has been set to prevent filler from downloading. If that's set to yes, even if you have a million forms that you're allowed to see, you're not gonna see them on the, on the form filler because this has been set to prevent. And sometimes that's set automatically, not by you manually going in here and saying no, but when you hit the submit button. Let me show you where that happens. If I was in the designer, and again, let's go back to my invoice form, let's add a submit button there. All right, let's go down to invoice, invoice, deal. And at the very bottom, we're going to put in a new control. It's going to be a submit control, submit, 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 or action button. That's what it's called. And then the action button, I can say action, uh, action button, action name. Actually, I'm sorry, there might be a different button that I want besides that one. Plus. Uh, I am blanking, which always happens when I'm on a webinar. <laughs> Let me just find out real quick here. Should be action button. Well, an action button does let you do TPL, um, but you should be able to do a submit. And one of the options for the submit in the command properties is the ability to say, hey, don't download this as soon as it's been submit, make it disappear. So that would be one of the reasons why that property may be set. The other hand, it may have nothing to do with that property. And it may have to do with the fact that as a user, you're not allowed to view forms that are have already been submitted or marked as submit. And for that, you need to take a peek into the permissions area and see um, what your combined group status role permission list has to say. So for a simple group, which is what probably most of your forms are set to by default, you wanna take a look and say, okay, when something is submitted, am I allowed to list it on the form filler? And if the answer is, if this is unchecked, then you won't be able to see it once it's submitted. 
same with approved, same with closed, if that's been set that way as a user. Uh, and that's just for users. Uh, it, it depends on who you're logged in as. If you have account administrator privileges, you may have different ones that are set to the user. And uh, we covered that one, I think, a couple weeks ago. Um, thank you, change status. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me go back to designer and show you what we need to find. It's called the change status button. And where did it go? Here it is, thank you. Thank you very much for the person who just wrote in and gave me the right answer. This is the change status button. So when this is like a submit button, so it's called close and upload form is its default text. You can change that text, by the way. Uh, and right here, change the form instance so that it will not download to the filler. If you've set this to yes, then that's gonna set that property and that might be the reason that it's disappeared. Now, if your forms have disappeared for yet another reason, of course, send an email to tfservice at alphasoftware.com and we'll be happy to track that down. So we are out of time. Thank you very much for joining me. Next week, or maybe the week after, depending on what our schedule is, we are going to be covering um, two ports. One is the, how do you get transformed to send data over to Alpha Cloud when that data is submitted? And then the other part we wanna cover is, how do we take that report that we created and have it automatically get sent to an email address? Maybe an email address that's actually filled in on the form itself is probably what we're gonna do. So I hope to see you there next time. In the meantime, if you have any questions, send them to tfservice at alphasoftware.com. Thanks very much for everyone who attended. Hope to take, take it easy. Have a good week and stay well. Bye-bye.